Welcome to the Heavy Briefings Podcast. We are Josh Runquist and the Metal Fairy. A fun-loving metal couple that brings you the best in new music. What did you just make me listen to? As well as movies. Three hours later, nothing of value was added. TV. It's going good, so why not cancel it? Video games. Here's an idea. Remake the game, but make it worse. Wrestling. Why are we still watching this week after week? And all things entertainment. I knew it. I knew she was behind Black Eyed Games. And a little insights into our personal lives. You don't mind that I trauma dump on you, do you? Uh, emotional support girlfriend, party one. He's a handsome fella. I know, you keep telling me. We're made for each other, because no one else would have us. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, this is Josh Ronquist for the Habit of Briefings Podcast, episode 48. Probably shouldn't even be making the show right now because in all transparency, I tried to commit suicide today. My 10th attempt in about 24 years, so no, not great. But uh, the only reason I'm still alive because she stopped me, uh, Metal Fairy, how are you doing? I mean, I'm doing as as rough as to be expected. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm going to have you lead the show. Okay. Because there's no possible way I could um, fake any kind of enthusiasm right now. Maybe I can have a couple remarks here and there, but uh, I really can't do a lot. I understand. understand. But I'm pretty much putting this out out only as an obligation to the one or two people that still listen to the show, at least according to Spotify and YouTube analytics. Uh, No one's checking this out. I know. And I kind of want to make this my last show. It it is a bummer to see that, because I know at least earlier on we had more listens than that. Sure did. Yeah. They all went away. Yeah. So I guess I'm curious what's going on. You know, I I love doing this show with you, but I know it hurts like seeing that people aren't listening because I, I love having this discussion. I love having something with you. I know we had talked about this, the idea of this for years. You're you the know? only reason I brought this back. Yeah. Yeah. And I love this time of the week. I look forward to it. I look forward to like doing, you know, different lists that we go through, doing the accountability even, even though I know sometimes they don't want line up in my alley like i like that you're you're exposing me to new music and stuff and a lot of times you show me some amazing stuff that i end up loving so why don't we just do this off air i mean we could do that too but i do think there's something really neat about having a podcast with you even if the viewership is way down but it's something to to figure out what we want to do well i know what i wanted well (laughs) earlier today i know what i wanted to do but uh, that didn't get to happen right so um Probably not for the best that I'm doing this show right now, but um, yeah, obligations, yeah. I guess. We don't have to do this show right now. No, yes, we do. Okay. It might just be a short one. Yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah, we don't have Yeah, I uh, usually every time that we record the show, I'm usually very happy to do it for all the same reasons that you said. Yeah. But with me taking the 10th attempt on my life today and uh, before we started recording, uh, just out of the whim, hey, how are those numbers doing for the show? And then just right. seeing them, no one, almost almost no one making it past the intro yeah. song of the show doesn't really fill me with a lot of joy yeah well, so this is just one where i if you can't tell by my voice my heart's just not going to be in it yeah just kind of going with the motions yeah yeah so if I got anything to say, I'll say something. Otherwise, uh, you can lead the charge. Okay. Well, uh, just talking a little bit about our past week before we get into some news. Oh, you mean the stuff before I tried to commit suicide? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Um, so we did have some wrestling content over the past week. Last weekend, we watched GCW. Um, there was two events, Saturday and Sunday night. We watched the one on Sunday night, and then we watched part of the one on Saturday Come night. Come on, you gotta see what these are. I'm sorry, I, I forgot the name of the GCW one. I didn't write that one down. They're, they're both GCW. Yeah. Yep. There was Tournament of Survival 9, which was the deathmatch tournament, and then mm-hmm. it was Cage of Survival. Yes. was the one on Sunday. That's yep. the one that we watched. Yes, that was the one we watched. You have notes. Why didn't you write them down? Because I totally forgot that. That one piece. Um, but Cage of Survival, that was, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, GCW is definitely a, a, a huge step above a lot of the other wrestling uh, worlds that we've watched in recent years with D- WWE and AEW. And, or a downgrade in quality, considering or, it's in VFW halls. Well, that and, is uh, true. That is true. What, what I think was a bus terminal this past weekend. It looked like one. Yeah, the, the venues are definitely something to be desired. But at, at the same time, they're ex- what you kind of expect for like a smaller uh, company. Um, but it was a fun one. I mean, the cage they actually used for the first match, and only the first match, because which kind of threw me off a little bit, because I thought it was going to be used for more than just the one match, since it was in the title of the pay-per-view. Or not pay-per-view, but the special. Um, well, it costs money to watch it. So that's true. That's it, true. It is a pay-per-view. Yeah, that's true. That it's just it. all of their shows are recorded, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
it was it was quite the cage like the front part of it that faces the camera the hard camera there was no cage on that side well there was but it was like flipped down and they never had it up at any point and then one of the sides there was a section missing and then part of it got like tore down in the, in the process of them wrestling kind of threw somebody against it and it fell down so there wasn't much of a cage to be talked about and they landed on a bed of barbed wire that that is true as well like i, I know we were expecting a lot of like um hardcore match stuff from the saturday night show but wasn't sure how much it would be on that sunday night show but there was some there definitely they they, they made a mess in that a uh, few of the matches <laughs> sure did um, and then, of course, the title match ended up being like five different title matches because it played a little hot potato amongst a few different people. Um, I know one of them had like a, a cash in they could do to get a match. And then it, it was just it was exciting in a way because, you know, it's. Well, number one, it's still new to us, kind of, in a way. But um, it's so different than a lot of the things that WWE and AEW have done. Um, but at the same time, it's hard to kind of figure out where they're going with stuff. You know, do they have direction? Or are they just kind of whimping, like, doing things on a whim? <laughs> well, as I said in the first take of uh, trying to do this show. Yeah. Uh, if you thought, you thought the beginning of this was dark, yeah, this, the first one was darker. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're just resetting everything for the rest of the year. Yeah, and that that would make sense. I mean, it's, you know, mid-year point. Let's see what's going on. And their previous champion, I forgot his name. Can you remind me? Um, Blake Christian. Blake Christian. Yeah, he apparently went to Japan and had to forfeit the title, so... We don't really know the details of that. <laughs> well, no, he's in the best of the Super Juniors. He couldn't make it back, so well, Matt Cardona true. said that he's stripping him of the title. That's true, but... A so lot I don't know what you're talking about. I guess I mean, like, in a lot of other companies, they'd give them the benefit of the doubt and be like, okay, this one just isn't going to be for the title anymore, or it's an interim title or something like that. But to completely strip him of it, I felt like that was a little more harsh than a lot of times you see. Well, considering their very first ever general manager, Matt Cardona, is making yeah. a all these rules and yeah. doing things very harshly i think it's part of the course that's that's true that makes sense that makes sense and then uh we got hood slammed tonight no, you didn't even say who won the title oh my apologies um jimmy you, you Lloyd. Didn't to the fr- no the final one no, no was it? joey janela won the title well yes yeah mm. then jimmy lloyd came out and beat mm. him yeah or tried to beat him and lost mm-hmm. and then they had the little uh uh copyright 2024 thing that they have at the end of all the wrestling shows make it seem like mm-hmm. it was over yeah no then that little rat face guy that comes out the Turbo Negro uh, <laughs> came out and immediately lost uh, because he had the brass ring which he could use that to claim yeah. any kind of uh, mm-hmm. match that he wanted. Yep. But then Mance Warner came out. Yeah, oh, yep. and yeah. Mm-hmm. It, he was able to have a title match anytime that he wanted so he yes. beat the crap out of Joey Janela mm-hmm. and that was it. Yes. One, two, three. Yep. Mance Warner was the champion. Yes. Made yeah. out with uh, the, the queen of the death matches. <laughs> yes. Who is his girlfriend in real life? I did not know that. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which totally makes sense it now. Totally does. They look like a couple. Yeah, you, d- you didn't say that. I didn't know that until just now. Oh yeah. Well, I looked it up after the fact. I didn't know at the time. But there, th- there's a lot of love going on in GCW. There is right. I, I wonder how much of it is real too. Sometimes, but that one I was able to confirm it was. Yeah, real. and um, <laughs> Speedball Mike Bailey uh, uh, is dating. Scott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't same know. age difference as us too. I know, right? Maybe there's yeah. something about us. Maybe we have a, a seven-year gap. Maybe. They, they don't seem like an, a couple I would have pegged ahead of time, but you know what? Good for them. <laughs> it's the mullet. It is the mullet. Um, and then outside of that, uh, yesterday we were out in a boot and we made a little stop to Antiques Minnesota, which if you haven't been to, it's this massive antique store, but they also have some things like comics and old toys and mm, all what, kinds like of stuff. two, three streets away from us? Yeah, it's not far at all. It's a couple of minutes away. Um, and we looked around a little bit and we were able to find you a fun little spot. Uh, figurine that you used to have when you were a youngster. Yeah, Medieval Spawn from 1994. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original one, still in the packaging. It didn't turn all yellow like I a know. lot of those it, do after how many years? It looks amazing for being from 94. <laughs> 
On the cheaper end of things too, I've seen it go anywhere from 20 to a hundred dollars mm-hmm. and we got it on the cheaper side. So yeah. that was cool. Absolutely. There was a few other spawn things there too, but um, yeah. one I was looking for was like 70, $80 and I just didn't yeah. feel like spending the that. ultra big one. Are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It was cool. Looking, there was though. a couple of Bart Simpson treehouse of horror comics that mm-hmm. would have been cool, but they were like 15, 20 bucks a piece. Yeah. I think one of them was even like 25, 30 or something yeah. like that, which is a little crazy. Well, a- I understand it. There wasn't oh, yeah. many of them, but that's true. That's just true. Too much. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, that has led me into a spawn sleuthing uh, session on you know Google and Amazon, looking at all the other figurines that exist out there. Because we, you, and we have a bit of a collection of them. And I've been thinking about lately creating a nice area for us in our apartment of where they can be displayed for for us to see better and stuff. So I'm not sure where they would fit, but uh, it's nice in theory. It is. It is. But there's some cool ones out there. So that is our past week. So we'll move on to some news. All right. So we got news. Yeah, we got a couple news things this week. So up first, Carmen Apice, a piche, however he says it versus his brother. <laughs> There's a piece and a piece, apice. Apice and a piece. Okay. Um, and Carmine does Carmine a piece. A piece. Okay. Um, he made some waves with something he said in an interview lately. Uh, the interviewer was talking about um, what was considered real heavy metal back in the early 1980s and was talking about how bands like Quiet Riot weren't really considered heavy metal. So Carmine um, stated, even Slayer, they weren't that buzzsaw guitar back in the day. Um, all those bands, Biohazard, I mean, all of those bands, they were hard rock. And then as the per se metal movement moved on and everybody started having that buzzsaw Metallica kind of buzzsaw guitars and fast bass drums like Lars. And I think that's where it all started. All that stuff that's going on today started with Metallica in my eyes. And of course he went on from there too, but basically saying that Metallica was the start of metal and there was no metal before that. What is your opinion on that? Well, I'll ask you the same thing I did once we had this conversation earlier in the week. Yeah. Can you name a metal band before Metallica? Yeah. I guess for me, like I, I was thinking a little bit more about this. I, I guess it depends on what your definition of metal is. I mean, if if for him it is this quote unquote buzzsaw um, kind of sound, which I don't even know exactly what he means by that because I'm not musically versed, I guess. <laughs> but um, th- then maybe Metallica is the first metal band. I've I've always had a little bit looser of a definition for it. Like I've considered '80s like hair bands. I, I don't mind the title glam metal. I think they fit in that at least some of them. Any Anyways, and so you know, if we're going with that, then bands like uh, Black Sabbath, Jewish Priest, that existed before that would be metal as well. Um, I, I just I feel like there's such like a dirty connotation that comes into play when you label somebody as rock instead of metal, and I I don't like that. <laughs> First of all, I don't like it, and number two, like. It, like I, I feel like people just need to kind of let let it go, let it go. Like I, I know we're all very we we've talked before about like how we describe music, the different subgenres, and all that stuff. And I think it's useful when you're trying to direct people into the type of music that they might want to listen to and such. But when it's like this strict line of okay, that's metal, that's rock, choose a side. Like where is the line? Really, where is the line? Well, I guess just all of my problems with this comes down to everyone saying that the first. Black Sabbath album, Black Sabbath, mm. is a metal album. Right, right, right. It's not. No. <laughs> it has a metal song mm-hmm. called Black Sabbath. Yeah. The rest of it is a blues rock album. Oh, yeah. Mm. There's a whole bunch of harmonica on there. there. <laughs> yep. It, it is a blues rock album. Totally. But it has one metal song that starts it off. Mm-hmm. And apparently no one else listens to the rest of the album. <laughs> They just hear the one song. So if you really want to go about it, I guess Paranoid is the first real heavy metal album. Yeah, yeah. Because that was actually considered a metal album from start to finish. Right, right. Or if you really want to scrutinize things, maybe it's Master of Reality. That's the first one because yeah. uh, both Paranoid and Master of Reality came out the same year. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Judas Priest fits in there as well, too. It, and mm. again, it just it depends on what end of the scale of heavy metal you want to go for. Yeah. But also people got to realize that the meaning of words 
change over time. That is absolutely And what used true. to be heavy at some point is light now. Yeah, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, metal wasn't, like, I, I know I was a baby back then, but, like, metal wasn't as popular of a word or a well-known word like it is today, you know? It was in its earlier days, so, of course, people aren't going to use it as much to describe music that is out there. And just look at all the trolls online about saying what's metal and what's not metal. Right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, there are some judgy people out there who, I mean, in reality, when it comes down to it, it's all opinion. That's all it is anyway. It's all a description. Yeah, it's just a describer. It's all opinion. Nobody has the right or wrong answer, but people get so up in arms about it. So you disagree with Carmine? I do. Yeah, because I have a I have a looser definition of metal, I would say. Than do you think would. King Cobra, Cobra is metal? King Cobra? I think I think they have some metal songs for sure. Yeah. I mean, I understand how some of their music could be considered, you know, a little bit lighter on the rock side, but I think they have metal songs for sure. All right. Yeah. He doesn't even know what the music he does is. (laughs) uh moving onward uh just before recording this we watched summer game fest and i also sent you something that has to do with that did you now yes Ooh, i like what i see we will bring this up in a little bit yes so overall i would say this was quite a lackluster event sucked (laughs) it sucked and i mean i'm sure there's people out there who loved it but it was not our cup of tea like you have to be in a more like anime style multiplayer and that is just not us. No, I like single player games. Exactly. Um, There were a few things that we could talk about though. So the first thing they showed was a new Lego game focusing around Horizon. So it's Lego Horizon Adventures. Now, yes, the, at least at one point, a PlayStation exclusive game, the franchise Horizon. Yeah. But it turns out this Lego version of Horizon is going to become to the PS5, Mm -hmm. PC, and the Switch. I know. What? (laughs) I haven't played Horizon, but I've watched you play it quite a bit. And that looks like a fun game. This one, like, I feel like it just, it's turning into a romp. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's all it is. It's, yeah. it's like the kid-friendly version of it that doesn't yeah. follow the story at all. Yeah. Considering how much they use, like, electricity <laughs> in the Lego game. It's like, this is after, it's supposed to be after the downfall of mankind. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and like they built like a carnival with electronics and stuff. Yeah. Alloy's just having a fun loving time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks cute. It looks cute, definitely. But it's a, it's a definitely a change from the main game, the real game. <laughs> you know, it's like if they made a, a new version of Mommy Dearest about uh, this uh, loving relationship between mother and daughter. Yes, yes, totally. Maybe they'll disagree on something once in a while, but you know, all the love is there. <laughs> they own a wire hanger factory. <laughs> I think that'd be... Pr- We're onto something here. Maybe. We're onto something. Um, Bloomhouse. Blumhouse. I'm sorry. I've always said Bloomhouse. Yeah, apparently it's Blumhouse. It's Blumhouse. Uh, Blumhouse has announced they're working on a slew of games. Um, yeah, well, well, not just that. They created a video game publishing yep, company. Blumhouse Games. Mm-hmm. And they have like six, seven, eight games in the works right now. Yeah. Um, the one coming out later this year is Fear the Spotlight. I mean, some of them look interesting, but like the visuals, yeah. Let's just call it what it is. They're all very much indie games. 100%. And I can't imagine a single one of them being like full retail price. I would hope not. They look like they're (laughs) games that would be anywhere from like $15 to $30. Yeah, unless they were to like bundle them all or something. Yeah. Yeah. But um, some of them look like old Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. Some of them look like PlayStation 1 games. Yeah. Which has really been a trend lately. It has. Has, especially for horror games. Yeah, we've seen a ton um, of those, especially like when they have the big sales and we're just kind of like, what is that game? <laughs> yeah, and it looks like it came out on the original PlayStation, but it came out like a year or two ago. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> One of them kind of looks like like a little farmer game, essentially. But Yeah, it's it's like Stardew Valley or Animal yeah. Crossing, but apparently there's, there's a whole bunch of murder in it. I know. That one could be up my alley. That one could be up my alley. <laughs> um, they just said that it's on consoles. And it doesn't PC, say which consoles. Yeah, PC and console so yeah so i don't know if that's gonna be on the switch i don't know if, right if it's gonna be like ps5 is it gonna be ps4 because yeah. apparently they're still making games for the ps4 apparently <laughs> what um yeah so i'm intrigued about all this there's no release dates on any of those but no, um no 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 i'm curious yeah and i'm kind of surprised they're not using any of their own ips for games i am too i was getting a little excited because they I, I forget which uh movies they do sometimes but they had brought up some on the 
the screen and Megan was one of them. I'm like, oh, that would be so cool to have a Megan game. Oh, an interactive game with Megan, you know, like uh, talking to her like AI or something like yeah. that. And it just goes completely wrong. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But alas, no such luck. As of now, anyways. Um, up next, there was a, a cute little game called Killer Bean. Um, <laughs> basically, all the characters are beans, but they're like, they walk around like human beings. They're dressed like humans and stuff. Um, but he, he's like this skilled killer that's like out to like take down a group of people. I forget what the group uh, the, was. The team that he used to work for. Yeah, the team he used to work for. And it looks, it's cute, but hilarious too. So I'm, I'm very curious about this one. I've never seen a bean in a game before i think it could be fun but yeah. also it needs to play good and that's my well, concern yeah definitely because i think that was another like one person e type game where one person created it it was a really small team yeah if nothing else mm -hmm, definitely um i'm gonna skip the next one keep that to the end but um uh, we also had sonic doing a couple oh, re releases that's right. of games that's right mm -hmm. uh updated for uh modern consoles and stuff like that mm -hmm. that seems to be pretty much all that sonic does yeah um yeah they eventually they try to make some new games and they always seem to really really fail at it yeah i don't know how hard it is to make a sonic game work i know you would think it'd be a pretty easy task uh, i guess not granted they did come out with sonic at one point <laughs> well no that was the internet that came out with sonic yeah well yeah but he looked so terrible in the movie at, at the beginning so maybe it's harder than we think <laughs> who knows well sonic was around before that oh was he okay yeah okay yeah that was just like an old internet thing where uh, someone drew sonic and spelled his name wrong oh Oh. So... Okay, okay. So the okay. internet just adapted that to That makes Sonic. sense. That makes sense. In <laughs> uh, other cute one was Party Aminals. Animals. <laughs> Aminals. Um, this kind of looks like, I forget the name of the game, but the game where you're like your little chubby dudes who push each other. Fall each guys. Other. Fall guys. Thank you. Little chubby dudes who push each other beans. off of beans. Yeah. <laughs> off of. You just got done saying there was no beans. That's true. But they are beans. I didn't know they were beans. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that adds a lot of context around that then. Yeah. <laughs> But they push each other like off of platforms and stuff like that. Except there, there's it seems to be like other mini games. I'm assuming in this game as well. But just uh, cute, squishy animals doing funny things. So yeah, it could be a cute one. <laughs> it could be. And then finally, Alan Wake Two. Um, there is finally going to be a physical edition of it that comes out, and a collector's edition, uh, which is up for pre-order starting tomorrow. And that is what this fine gentleman over here just sent me a picture of because it includes. Um, a box with emboss uh, slipcover, which looks really cool. That means you put it over top of the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, an Ocean View Hotel keychain, which looks pretty cool as well. The piece de resistance, the angel lamp, which actually lights up and works. Yeah, which, you put a real bulb in it and yeah. it works just like that. To, it looks it, so cool. It looks really good. It does. Then there is a over 160 page art book, which includes uh, character environment concepts, which looks amazing as well. Um, obviously the game and then um, an enamel piece pin set as well so it, it looks like a pretty cool deal um it's supposed to be going for about 200 dollars, which is a, a hefty number but it is cool it's very cool yeah it's a cool looking setup and i don't know if it's a limited edition collection right um i know it's from limited run games which i, I know they don't do unlimited yeah. copies and stuff like that so it could completely sell out but that is true it it looks really nice it does, it does. Uh, of course uh, we got the digital version and you completely missed out on the fact that uh, the first dlc comes out uh, oh, tomorrow yes, as yes. we're recording this yes i had that down all, all based around uh the the tv show from alan wake night springs yes but it looks like it's also adapted into the world of alan wake as well mm -hmm. too featuring characters of the whole universe yeah that you can play but um it all has that uh twilight zone night springs feel behind it yeah and we need to go back and play the games because you've played them before yeah. but oh, of course I have. i've only paid attention to bits and pieces and i have you know since fallen in love with the music Music from the movie or not the movie the game it's almost like a movie well <laughs> people like to say alan wake 2 is basically just an interactive movie and i like it's that. not i like that a... in a game though and i i disagree with people but even if it has those features i enjoy that but i definitely want to go back and see what it's all about and i'm excited for the dlc too with it being like twilight zone and stuff because i love the twilight zone <laughs> well you'll love the first game because uh when you watch 
different TVs, they have little short mini episodes of oh. Night, Night Springs where it's uh, different awesome. episodes of Night Springs. Nice. So. Okay, I'm I'm excited for this. We need to do this. And of course, Poets <laughs> of the Fall is in yes, both games. Yes. Old Gods of Asgard. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. also Poets of the Fall, which uh, mm. there's actually a bit in the first game where yeah. uh, uh, th- this band I'm about to play reminds me of our very own local lo- Old Gods of Asgard. It's Poets <laughs> of the Fall. It's I forgot. Fall. You told me that before. Uh, I forgot about that. Yes, I'm excited for that too. And then I want to learn the dance afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, Sam Lake, uh, the the owner of uh, Remedy Games, came out and yeah. kind of did the dance. He and, did. Uh, he did a little bit uh, of at least. Please stop. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> this is the only way I can come out for these things anymore is if I do this. <laughs> Dance, dance, dude, dance. Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> exactly. But that wraps up the news for this week. Right on. All right, now it's uh, time for Accountability 101. Um, usually during this part, we would have a theme or something like that, but um, considering the events that I talked about in the beginning of the show, that mm-hmm. was not going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of just want to name the episode uh, after a sentence song. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I have a couple I could choose from, and you probably know which ones they are. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Accountability 101, basically in layman terms, it's not holding bands accountable for their subject matter or holding them to mm-hmm. the standards of 2024. No. This is all about the Metal Fairy being accountable for saying that she's going to check out this band or that band or mm-hmm. the other band n- never actually doing it. So yes. I created this segment <laughs> to hold her accountable to actually listen to the bands that she said that she would check out. Yeah. Whether she was humoring me like this band or ones that she actually <laughs> wanted to check out and just never did. Like <laughs> like Kill Switch Engage, like Fate's Warning, and other bands. <laughs> So, yeah, um, if you didn't pay attention to last week's show, you can pretty much guess um, this is a band that the Metal Fairy pretty much, once she saw it landed on this, all of her joy just went away <laughs> because she did not want to do this one. But I still just wanted her to give it a chance. Yeah. It is Alsace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the band, they weren't the first, but they were basically the band that kind of pioneered the black gaze mm-hmm. subgenre, which is a mixture of black metal and shoegaze combined, meaning mm-hmm. it has like those really, uh, like the pulse rock, atmospheric kind of stuff where mm-hmm. there's a lot of tremolo picking, but it's kind of pretty sounding. Mm-hmm. Oh, although in shoegaze, it's basically just that one riff and it never changes. Mm, okay. Which is why it's called shoegaze because um the bands look down when they're playing guitar and just stare at their shoes <laughs> that's great <laughs> that that's literally where shoegaze came from that's awesome i had no idea <laughs> yeah and then of course black metal which also does have tremolo picking but it's usually more dark and evil and stuff like that but alcest is not that kind of band yeah they well i'll say for the brand new album it's very positive but i don't know if i'd necessarily say that for any other album yeah um you heard a couple songs off the new album than the singles and you said it was just too happy for you it was just like the kind of music you listen to when you're happy in the forest maybe a national park maybe i'll have to listen to them on a different day maybe (laughs) yeah but um this is not that album this is one of the darker albums Mm -hmm. um and almost all the titles i mean there's a couple that are in english there are but all the lyrics and almost all the song titles are in french Mm -hmm. so what is the name of this album I'm going to butcher this. I did take French in high school and then Italian in college, but we'll give it my best shot. Les Voyages de la May. <laughs> we'll go with that. That might be what it is. It could be. It very well could be. But yeah. I... Um, when we saw Alcest with opening for Anathema, which I, mm-hmm. I know was one of your favorite shows that we ever went to. Oh, yeah. Um, they were basically touring behind this album, but they ended with a brand new song called Deliverance, uh, which came off of their next album, Shelter, which is my least favorite Alcest album. Yeah. And that new album really reminds me of Shelter. Okay. Where it does just seem happy, cheery yeah. kind of stuff. And, yeah. Um, not, not even black metal just like yeah. like happy post rock kind of stuff and <laughs> That's yeah. never been my bag. Right, right. But this album is my bag. It it features my favorite Alsa song, and uh, we'll get to that song once. Uh, I'm assuming we're doing this track by track like we normally do, and I'll yeah. get to that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think this is one of the darker ones. It has it has a good mix of the black metal side and a lot of stuff. It it features some of the shoegaze elements as well too. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good balance of both. So if you like either genre, I think this is the album to go for if you're mm-hmm. interested in this. Okay. But what was it for? you go ahead and let us know all right so the first song again i'm gonna butcher this uh ultra temp um ultra temp maybe (laughs) 
honestly, this wasn't bad. I thought it was really calming. He has like a really just a nice mellow voice, you know, it, it just kind of- Well, when he's doing cleans. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It just kind of takes you away. And I, I I love that he sings in French. Like it's just very, it's relaxing, but it adds a different vibe to it too, you know? And I, I didn't like- Not to the people of France. Well, sure, sure. <laughs> but for us Americans, <laughs> um, yeah, I actually like that song. Uh, the second song- Here we go. La où ne sont les couleurs. Part of it is cut off on my Spotify. <laughs> couleurs. Um, uh, I, yeah, you're missing an entire word. I, is there too? Oh, nouvelle. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> want, want to try that again for the folks at home? <laughs> La où ne sont les couleurs nouvelle? Maybe. Um, I like this one even more than the first one. Like, I really like the heavy parts with the harsh vocals, but mixed in with the balance of the the cleaner stuff. There's a part towards the end that gets a little maybe proggy is the right word. I'm not sure, but then it like I would never consider Alcest to be prog. But really, uh, then it's the wrong word I'm using. Okay. But then it retreats from that too. So I I just, just could you dis- could you dis- describe what you're talking about? It was just a little um it kind of all over the place for a little brief part. Um, I, I'll play it for you at some okay. point. Yeah, fair but, enough. But overall, I really like that song. The third song, Les Voyages de la May, the uh, t- self t- or titled after the name of the album. Um, <sighs> title I, track. Title track. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I like this one too. Like I like the heavier parts again, but it has some really pretty mellow parts too. Um, there were some parts that were a little, a little more atmospheric for me, but um, I still liked it. I still liked it. The fourth song, uh, "Nous sommes les Maraud. Uh, this was a nice little mid-tempo thing. I, his voice really, I felt, felt shine th- shone through in this one. And it just sounded really nice and clean, and I, I loved it. Um, also, he, we were referring to yes, his my niche. Apologies. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That is my bad habit. <laughs> Niche. <laughs> and it's not just him in the band? Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's the only singer, right? Well, live it's more full, but uh, mm-hmm. it's him and the drummer pretty okay. much uh, writes everything together. Okay, sure. The fifth song, Beings of Light. This one was a little more atmospheric. Is that the right word? Like, do you consider this one atmospheric? I mean... To an extent, To yeah. an extent. Um, I mean, atmosphere can be used in a couple different ways. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying... <sighs> I, I, I think I know what you're going for. And yeah. Yeah, it fits. Okay. I didn't like this one as much as the previous ones, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, the sixth song, Faiso uh, de Mont. Um, this one, I, I really like the slower guitar parts. They, was, they were really nice. Um, but then some of it, again, was a little too atmospheric for me. But again, there's parts that I enjoyed. <laughs> so it was kind of up and down for me. <laughs> That's strange because it's the heaviest song on the album. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's the only one with blast beats in it. And, and I, I like the blast beats part, but then there was parts that just went a little bit all over, I think. Um, that was my favorite song off the album. Is it? Well, there was parts I liked, though. There was parts I all liked. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, the seventh song, Havens. Um, this one was just a pretty little instrumental, but it was really beautiful, I thought. And then finally, number eight, Summer's Glory. This one struck me as very 90s alternative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, that's kind of like what the post-rock shoegaze kind of thing is. It's okay. like, it has a lot of 90s alternative rock kind of feel behind it. I gotcha, I gotcha. And, and there were definitely parts that were super catchy with that. There was parts that weren't quite up my alley, but there was, there was catchiness in there too. So overall, I would say there are definitely things I like about them, like the instrumental stuff is really good. I, I do really like his voice a lot. There's just parts that get a little too atmospheric for me and a little too out there, but there there are some nice things here. There are some nice things with them. Would you ever check them out again? Yeah, I'd give them another go. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you want me to pick something that's more closer to black metal than the shoegaze mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That would be good, I think. Mm-hmm. And is that what you mean by the atmospheric stuff, where it kind of has like that 90s alternative rock guitar sound? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'll, I know that for sure. But well, when we like, turn the mics off, you'll yeah. you can show me what you're talking about. I will. I will. <laughs> but yeah, I, I it wasn't wasn't as bad as as I originally thought Elsos was. <laughs> well, I am glad to hear that. If there was anything to go right today, I'm glad that um it wasn't a complete bust for you. Not at all. There were some good songs on there. Whereas other bands like Svalbard, where I figured it would have been right up your alley, and uh, I couldn't have been more off the mark. <laughs> but you never uh, know. Dr- you consider Dredge to be a hipster band. <laughs> But the thing is, like we were talking earlier, you mentioned earlier, you know, people's t- tastes change over the years, too. So it's true. You never know. I might come around or a different day. <laughs> that is very possible as well. 
Well, we got 11 entries for the Spin the Choice wheel. All right. Before we get into that, do you like Alcest? Do you not like Alcest? Have you ever checked them out before? Are you willing to check them now, now considering the Metal Fairy's thoughts? Anything else like that, let us know in the comments down below. But now, oh wait, never mind. It is 10 because Alcest did not uh, get eliminated from last time, even though I saved it. That, <laughs> that's really weird. All right, Spin the Choice. Here we go. And if I stick around for next week, what will you be checking out? And bonus round. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, well, the Metal Fairy's choice. Okay, okay. So, what do you think it means? I get to choose one of the other bands on there? You could do it that way. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Um, you could also choose to listen to another album from a band that you did enjoy. Okay. Uh, a band that you want to explore more. One that we haven't talked about yet. That might not even be on the wheel. Mm. I'll, um, do, I'll do you one better. I'll choose one from the wheel, and I'll try to choose one that's not on the wheel as well. So, you're going to do one of each? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping this one would would have been last yeah yeah for that reason <laughs> but um okay well we got nine entries here okay um feels like i'm kind of burying the lead if i say what they are do you want me to just look yeah okay oh wait Okay, I am going to pick My Dying Bride. You're, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. What made you go with that? Well, I, I am familiar with his voice. Um, and <laughs> his voice. <laughs> he has a name. I know. And, and I it's not just him. And I don't know it. <laughs> Aaron Stainthorpe. Aaron Stainthorpe, thank you. We yes. bring this up almost every show I know. in some way, shape, or form. I know we do. <laughs> My mind is not there right now. Um, Why? What happened today? Oh, you know, work. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one way to call it. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I thoroughly enjoy what I've heard from Aaron Stainthorpe and his, his vocal ability. So I'm curious to hear more of this. And I know I've heard uh, songs from My Dying Bride and I've enjoyed them. So, yeah. All right. Well, do you want to go with like the early day stuff, the middle stuff, newer? Well, how would you differentiate? them um the early day my dying bride is while well, they were part of the peaceville three along with mm -hmm. paradise lost and anathema mm -hmm. so if you remember what the death doom eras of paradise lost and anathema sound like yep. my mm -hmm. dying bride sounds like that okay uh the middle era they start to get a little more experimental there's like one album that has like like electronics and stuff to it okay uh usually regarded as the uh worst my dying bride album <laughs> okay uh, and then basically everything after that is more or less the my dying bride that you might be familiar with we'll go with something from the, the newer stuff yeah okay um i'm trying to decide what direction i should have you go down into yeah i could easily do the new album which i've already talked about and you've heard a song off of um but I don't think that would be as exciting. Um, I guess I can go with the most commercial sounding one of all of them. Okay. Which might be the easiest one because uh, a majority of the album is Aaron's clean vocals, which I know you enjoy. Okay. And that'll be the 2020 album, The Ghost of Orion. Okay. Uh, this is arguably the darkest My Dying Bride album as well as the most commercial. Okay. Uh, mainly because... Uh, this album was written during the time that Aaron's daughter, young daughter, uh, contracted cancer. Ooh, okay. And she miraculously survived. Oh, good, 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 good. But it's all about the pain Ooh. that goes through that, especially uh, the song Tired of Tears, which I can imagine, you can imagine why that's the name of the song and yeah. all the emotions yeah, yeah. that go through that. Oof. But um, yeah, I think that's what we're going to go with. The 2020 album, Ghost of Orion. Okay. Now, what about the other album? That one I'm going to have to think about for a little bit. I'm gonna do a little... Well, well think about, like, the, the bands that you've enjoyed the most. Mm -hmm. Like, Killswitch, like, Fate's Warning. Mm -hmm. Like, are any of those bands, like, ones that it's like, oh, that sounds really good right now? You know what? Let's do another Killswitch. We've no, been listening another to... Another Killswitch? We've been listening to quite a bit of Fate's Warning this week. <laughs> or yesterday, anyways. Um, So, I, I feel like I've heard a little bit of them now, but uh, yeah, I do want to go back to them again at some point, but Killswitch would be good right now. Killswitch? All right. Uh, You're gonna go with um probably the most underrated album, Okay. but one of my favorites. Favorites. Yeah. It is the 2009 self-titled album. Okay. And the reason I'm going with this is also because this has the most amount of clean vocals in any of the Kill Switch and Gage albums. All right. It's also the <laughs> final album with Howard Jones. Okay. Okay. So I think it's a good combination for different reasons. Yeah, definitely. One's about broken love and one's about... <laughs> 
losing some, almost losing someone you love. So oh. it's a good one-two combination of Kill Switch Engage and My Dying Bride. Yes. I can think of a couple people who, if they are listening to this, probably by accident, and they hear that we're doing this, are probably going to be <laughs> very, very upset that we had put those two bands together. But screw it. Deal with it. All right, we're back for the final segment of the show. Um, the Metal Fairy tried showing me what she was talking about, and uh, kind of did. I, I kind of got it. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. But anyways, uh, we got some new singles that we've checked out and we also got out today and what i missed and we're recording this on friday so it's technically accurate it is it so is. so what do we got for the new singles yeah so for the singles we checked out uh thunder by crypt crypt sermon what were your thoughts on that one i thoroughly enjoyed it uh, i think it's like good old dark horror-esque doom metal mm-hmm. that's what i've always liked them for clean always clean vocals um like heavy metal and doom metal combined i i thoroughly enjoy them but mm. you didn't i like i want to like them because i love that they have like the horror element to them and that's like right up my alley and i do think they could be good for you know if i made like a playlist for like halloween or for like a horror playlist something like that but i think i would need to give them more listens to like see if they're a band i could like listen like just hunker down with you know what i mean fair enough uh up next is hammerfall with the end of justice now i saw oscar say this is one of the strongest hammerfall albums i saw that too did he hear and that? I also saw a lot of people say that he looks like a girl now. All right. I mean, that's a shift, but <laughs> did he hear their last album? <laughs> I could have sworn he was there for it. Yeah, I thought so too, but I don't know. This, like... That last album was something else. What was that? That last album was something else. It was. It was. It was so, so good. And so far, the couple singles from this one are just not up to par with that. I mean, they they still have the Hammerfall sound and oh, stuff like that. Hammerfall's gonna Hammerfall. Exactly. But it's just not living up to that last album at all. See, they could have redeemed themselves and actually had King Diamond do something yeah. on this album. <laughs> right. <laughs> But it doesn't look like they're going to. I don't think so. I don't think so. And then the video for this song. Yeah, it, it was them in their practice room and a drone. Yeah. And the drone like looked like it had issues because it was kind of flopping around and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> um, I didn't think it was bad. It just sounded like standard Hammerfall to me. Exactly, exactly. And I think it's just after the last album and seeing what they can do, you know, in this day and age. It, it, I was just hoping for more. I was hoping yeah. for more. Mm-hmm. And just hearing Oscar say that, it just makes me think of all those times where a band's forced to say in a press release, this is their best <laughs> album to date. Yes. I just don't think it's true this time around. It's not. It's just not. I could be wrong, and the best right. songs could not be singles. You never know. That you is very know. possible. It's true. But, you know, Hammerfall started off strong with the singles on the last album, and the entire album was just as strong. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Up next, uh, Portrait Portrait with From the Sun. Yes, uh, more uh, very horror-esque heavy metal. Kind of has that new wave of British heavy metal sound, even though they're from Sweden. Yeah. I really dug it. Um, It was a bit more raw than I'm used to, but Mm. I still think it really worked for what they were trying to go for. Yeah. Dark, evil, gothic imagery, new wave of British heavy metal. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I, again, I love, I love the imagery. I love anything horror related. It's another band I think I need to listen to a little bit more to get a good feel for everything, but it, it, it's an option. It's an as option. shocking as it sounds, I've interviewed them before and I showed you them in the past and you, I don't, know. you don't remember. I know. <laughs> Uh, up next, Kveen, Kveen, uh with the Ancient Gods. Yes, um, very much of the uh, black metal territories, mm-hmm. uh, like gothic black metal kind of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it can maybe get a little progressive. Sometimes it gets a little more uh, post-rocky, maybe. But um, it's like it's dark, it's evil, it's cosmic. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, not quite up my alley. I mean, you said it was. Was this one okay? Maybe I got this one confused then. Then. You- I was telling you how shocked I was that you like this one. Oh, that one. Okay, sorry. My apologies. Yes. Yeah, I did like this one. I do want to hear more from them, though. Again, I mean, it's it's hard basing it just on a single, of course. But yeah, I'm curious about this one. What, what one were you thinking of? I don't know. <laughs> I think my head just got confused in the moment. I, I think I confused. Which is weird because you wrote this all down. I didn't write down my notes for this one, though. Okay. Yeah. Um, Steve Plunkett is next. <laughs> this is the yeah, one I got yeah, confused with. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, singer <laughs> From uh, Autograph. formerly of Autograph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the song Rock Machine. Yeah. And once you know it, so the cover is a robot uh, made of metal. Yes, it, it is. It looks like he's ready to rock. It does. It does. Uh, this is uh, the first solo album since his 1991 
one debut solo album. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. It's and a while. so what's 33 years? Yes. Right about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why now? Right? Like y- you shouldn't have put one out at all. Yeah, if you it, waited this long, maybe you should have just kept waiting. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. It was not good. Well, apparently the whole album's out now. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm. I don't plan on checking it out. <laughs> I don't either. Like this was. I only checked it out because I know how much you liked Autograph in the past. That's true. That's true. Yeah. This was a far fetch from Autograph. Like it was just you know old eighties rocker trying to sound what he like what he thinks would be popular now, and it's not at all. This is the song that I keep talking about Mm -hmm. with bands from the 80s putting out terrible albums. Yeah. Just Mm -hmm. awful, awful albums. 100%. You know, like bands that used to make good music and then they just decide to stop being good. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why that Russell Guns album is such a refreshing uh, change of pace because Mm -hmm. it doesn't suck. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you would think, oh, Great White, uh, LA Guns, who cares? Mm -hmm. It's 2024. No, they they prove that uh, they can get kicked out of their own bands and still make great music. Mm-hmm. It's true. So uh, bands can do it, just not every band. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, we had the offspring with Make It All Right. This sucked. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> Now, you tried explaining this to me this morning. Yeah. And I'm still baffled by your description. Okay. Like, it... No, 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 no. Yeah. You described it as a Blink-182 song. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it's serious. No, not because it's serious. Not because it's serious, because they take it serious. So, you, I feel like You think Blink-182 takes themselves seriously? With songs no. like, I want to F a dog in the no, A. No, no. I, I meant more sound-wise with the Blink-182 thing. I just felt they sounded like them. But my point with Offspring is like in the past, they've had kind of two lanes they would go down. Either songs that are a little bit more serious um, or songs that are a joke and they, they're they in on the joke, you know? Whereas this one, it sounds like they're trying to be kind of fun. They're, like it's it's humorous in a way or terrible, if you want to say. And they don't think they it is. They can be one in the same. They don't think it is. that. Well, that is true. And they're taking it seriously when they should be just having fun with it. I don't know. That's my impression of it anyways. Yeah. Um, I've only ever liked a handful of Offspring songs. Yeah. And whenever they do come on, I basically just only have them on for your benefit. That is true. <laughs> and this is another example why I've never gotten into them. I understand. I understand. This would not be a good example to get, to get anybody into them. No. <laughs> Do not listen to this album. No. Well, <laughs> the album could be good. Well, that's true. They're, they're it's just good this song is not good. Exactly. All right. So we got 11 albums that I reviewed over the past week. Uh, the bands are very thankful that I did it and some of them shared it and yeah. thanked me for it. And uh, no one else, including anyone that's uh, checked out the reviews or anything like that. And anytime I ask for feedback, no one seems to care. But we're still going to go over this. Yeah. Starting with the debut album from Brazen Tongue with Of Crackling Embers and Sorrows Drowned. Uh, this kind of has like a, a, a bit of a mix of like melodic death metal, metalcore, and thrash metal thrown together. Uh, it's an international band. Um, one from Europe, one from Chicago. Chicago. Um, I'm assuming all of this was basically done through transfer files and stuff like that, but even mm-hmm. through that, I, I still really like the way this came out, but what did you think? I thought it was really catchy. Like, I liked the clean vocals on top of the kind of harder, harsh vibe of it. Um, Yeah, I'm curious to hear more of it. All right, next up, we have Evergrey with their brand new album, Theories of Emptiness. I think it's their best album since Monday Morning Apocalypse, and I don't think you would go that far. Right. (laughs) But um, you're one of those later stage Evergrey fans. (laughs) So um, your opinion only means so much. Right, right. But what did you think of this? Um, yeah, I... And keep I, it in mind, you heard the whole album today. I did hear the whole album, and I really like it. Like, I definitely think it's their best album in quite a while. I wouldn't go back as far as you did, but I, I love what they're doing now. Yeah. Well, where would you put it? Um... I know you can't name all the albums and stuff like that, but is it, like, in the upper tier, lower tier, middle tier? Oh, like, ranking the albums? Yeah. I would put it, not the highest tier, but, like, maybe, like, a B. Okay, how's it compared to, like, The Glorious Collision or Torn or Hymns of the Broken? Um, I mean... I'm trying to go with the ones that you know. Well, I know ones before that, too, some of the ones anyways. Um, there's, I would say, as time has gone on, there's definitely songs from the albums you've mentioned and ones prior to it that I still absolutely love and stuff. There's ones that I still like, but I just don't go back to as much. So I would say that some of these are probably going to rate higher than some of the songs. But why are you shaking your head? You know why. You don't even <laughs> like the albums. Or you like them, but you don't like them as you said this was better than a lot of them. Um, n- no. No, I didn't. 
<laughs> Lori's <laughs> Collision. That's after. Yeah, after. Mm-hmm. All right, I must have heard you wrong because I thought you said like the earlier ones. Oh, that, no. That made me think the earliest Evergreen oh, no, albums. Oh, no, 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 no. And no, that's no. what made me shake my head. No, sorry. No. <laughs> the ones you mentioned, like the Glorious Collision and you, Hints for the Fallen. You're making it sound like I don't like them at all. Oh, no, no, no. Just, I'm just saying you said that this album was better than the best album in a while. So mm-hmm. Darn tootin'. Darn tootin'. And of course, this also features a guest appearance of uh, Jonas Renski of Catatonia. Yeah, they saw. Uh, doing his clean vocals and f- for the first time in such a long t- decades, mm-hmm. he did growls. Yeah. So what did you think of this particular song called Dreams? I really liked it. Like, they sounded amazing together. <laughs> and I love his growls. They sound amazing on this album. It's not something that I'm, you know, you really hear often with Evergreen. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so in fact, n- n- never. no song. Yeah, never. <laughs> So it's really cool hearing Tom partnered with like somebody doing harsh vocals. That's it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. This song is a uh, real sticking point to a lot of people. Is it? For the ones that hate growls, mm. they hate the song and they think less of the album. Of course. Of course. And for the ones that do like growls, they really do enjoy the album and think it's one of the best ones on the album. It's like, oh, Evergreen's going to be like Opeth now. They're just going to oh, be doing geez. growls. All t- <laughs> that wasn't Tom England, first of all. Uh, no. No, no, no. And he doesn't do that. No. It's funny i was listening to evergrey um we went to go see them uh do an acoustic uh, performance yeah. at prog power and yeah. uh one of the bits during the show was like talking about how songs make you want to go down with a noose and a razor and go I down know. to the basements and uh what did i try to do after hearing this not uh, long after yeah uh, but then he did a uplifting cover to bring us all back up. oh yeah the, the the happiest song of the set wasted years by our exactly, maiden exactly all right uh next up is the band holy mother with Rise. Uh, this kind of has like a classic heavy metal, almost power metal kind of vibe. They also have some groove metal elements where they kind of add some like Egyptian tribal drumming kind of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to turn you off completely. I guess for me, like there was things about this, the song I heard that I absolutely loved. And then there's things that I wasn't sure what to make of because it was such like a diverse song. Um, I just think I need to hear more from them to get like a good feel for them as a, as a whole. Maybe that's what you got to do. Uh, next up is the third album from, uh, the Chicago post metal sludge do metal band Huntsman with the dry land. I haven't really heard time describing this one because there's elements of sludge and post metal and do metal all combined in here, but they don't sound like any other band that I could describe in any of those genres. Mm -hmm. They have their own thing. But what did you think? There was things about it. I liked especially musically i found the vocals to be a little weak but maybe on some more listens and maybe another songs they try and do a little bit more well none of that's going to matter to you as pretty much the rest of this minus one album is well two mm-hmm. is right up your alley that's true. basically completely so that's true that's going to render all the ones for saying oh, i need to listen to it again you're never going to listen to them again because these <laughs> ones came out oh. so you're bsing the crowd and me <laughs> And all that starting with the L.A. band Entranced with their debut album Muerte e Metal. Uh, this is a bilingual album where a lot of it is in Spanish and a lot of it is in English and some songs have both in the same song. Mm-hmm. Kind of just like that terrible, terrible Adam Sandler movie Spanglish. <laughs> I've never seen that movie. Don't. Good. I won't. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like classic heavy metal, classic yeah. hard rock, mm-hmm. speed metal, revival metal. Kind of has like a desperado kind of feel behind all of it as well. Mm-hmm. And of course, Entranced, a play on words of the Scorpion song, which yes. I'm surprised there isn't a cover of that on this album. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they do it live, or if they don't, they should. Mm-hmm. What did you think of this? Girl, yes. <laughs> like, I absolutely love this. It's so 80s. I definitely hear like a King Cobra vibe to them, and I, I love it. I love everything about it. If King Cobra was from Mexico and yes. LA. Yeah, exactly. Tijuana, let's yeah. say, <laughs> with the donkey shows. Uh, next up is East with Another World. Um, I forgot which album this is. This is like the fifth or sixth album from this band, but it's the first one I've checked out. Okay. Uh, very much of that uh, 80s AOR sound mm-hmm. and early 90s AOR. Uh, quite powerful female vocals. Mm-hmm. Kind of going for that sultry kind of sound going on as well. Kind of. Uh, what did you think? I absolutely love this one too. I, I, I thought she sounded a little bit like Le, Le, um, Lorraine Lewis. Um, just kind of a little similar vibe in her vocal tone. Um, but I absolutely love it. But again, super 80s, right up my alley. Well, you have a lot more albums of them to go through. And you did the same thing again with her. I know, I know. Okay, this is my promise for the next the next show. I'm going to be the only one to hear this promise, but go ahead. That's okay. The next show, I will not say him or her without saying
saying their name first. Okay. You know, in, in for follow-up sentences, I can, but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, next up, we go to San Diego with Mithrium and their debut album, Oblivion Anternum. Anternum. It's funny. There was a game uh, with uh, Anternum in the title that we just saw in yes. the Summer Game yeah. Fest, and I still don't know how to pronounce it right. I don't either. <laughs> um, more or less straight up black metal with some more kind of theatrical and gothic moments thrown in for good measure, but that did not seem to matter to you. I mean, th- th- I found some of it catchy, and I really like the guitar work over it, um, but black metal can be a little bit harder for me to get into, so maybe some more listens and kind of hear more what they're about. Well, that's not what you said when we checked this out. What do you mean? It's fine, but I don't see myself ever going back to this. Well, normally off the first listen, but like, you know, I try to, I've been trying to check out other songs from this when I get to my lists at the quarters and stuff, so. I know, it's just, you know, hmm. it, you, you say that a lot, but I notice you never say it on air. It's like, I don't see myself ever going back to this. Well, I didn't write that down. I wrote kind of catchy, nice guitar work over it. I know, I'm just going off of what you told me when you checked okay. these out. Okay. Uh, next up is a band from 1979 who has apparently been going all the way to this day, uh, despite the fact that uh, only one original member left in the band, mm-hmm. a French heavy metal power metal band known as Nightmare with Encrypted. Uh, this is some good commercial but very heavy power metal mm-hmm. with some occasional growls in there once in a while, but mainly clean vocals. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of this? I really like this one too. She has an amazing voice. Again, I said she, <laughs> um, like you said, it's power metal, but it's super like hard. It's just really catchy. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up is another debut album uh, from the band Voidgazer with Dance of the Undesirables. And uh, of course they have the name of the song, Jesus Take the Needle. I did Which love you that do title. Like the title. <laughs> um, they're a mixture of like progressive metal, sludge metal, grindcore. Yet at some points they'll throw in like a Dawkin or a rat riff. <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> like it, it it feels like such a weird unholy mix and that's probably why you didn't like it yeah like i, I again i love the title but i i just found them to be boring and kind of lumbering and i didn't like the vocals either so me that's a shame and then uh, the uh, two albums that I missed out in the past week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one, um, probably your album of the year right now. Possibly. Is uh, the sophomore album from Nestor with Teenage Rebel. Mm-hmm. This is a band that started in 1989, but did not put out an album until 2022. <laughs> And what their a sophomore, story. And, and their <laughs> sophomore album came out two years later now in 2024. Mm-hmm. As I said in my review, this is the best 80s band who never put out an album in the 80s, 90s, <laughs> 2000s, or 2010s. Oh, that's great. And after you heard the whole album, what did yeah. you think? 100% love this album. Like like you said, it's super, I mean, they still have that 80s sound to them, but it's, it's still good. It's not It's not like our uh, Steve Plunkett friend over there. <laughs> like This is good stuff, like super rocky, but some melodic parts too and i love that their songs like some of their songs definitely have a deeper meaning but some then some of their songs are totally like 80s love songs and just eh, they're just amazing amazing it's really good stuff it is and finally we got the uk band shrapnel with their fourth album in gravity they started off as like a pure metallica style thrash band Mm -hmm. and with this particular album there's still some thrash in them but they've also kind of gotten more of the melodic metalcore route like there's Mm -hmm. a lot of clean vocals on this album uh, there's a lot of really catchy riffs going on here that remind me of something like Trivium or Early Day Bullet for My Valentine. Mm-hmm. What did you think of this? Super catchy. Yeah, I really liked their melodic metal take. Uh, I, I liked the cleans. I liked the harsh. Like It was just a good mix of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you should check out the whole album when you get the chance. Absolutely. Uh, there might be other songs you like on there as well. Absolutely. And there you go. A bit of a shorter show this week. And um, if you haven't figured it out from everything that I've been talking about, I think you understand why this is a shorter show Mm -hmm. but uh that's what we got this week uh thank you for tuning in if i stick around uh next week will be episode 49 uh to recap things uh the metal fairy will be checking out uh the ghost of orion by my dying bride and the self-titled album from kill switch engage from 2009 um some call it kill switch engage 2 i think it's the only self-titled album as the first album is basically a glorified demo as almost all of those songs got re-recorded and put onto different albums Mm -hmm. but um yeah very different uh new wave of american heavy metal as they yeah. called it back in the day or melodic metalcore or second right. wave metalcore whatever you want to call it and the, one of the leaders of melodic gothic death doom yeah i'm excited all right let's hope i stick around mm-hmm. and uh stick around for the in- outro all that stuff and for the metal fairy this is josh ronquist saying embrace the skullet this has been the heavy debriefings podcast thank
thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Limited Briefings on all your favorite social media sites. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and threads. And of course, HeavenToBriefings.weebly.com for all of your Heaven to Briefings needs. Also check out The Metal Fairy at Facebook.com at the Metal F-A-E-R-I-E. Until next time.